Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, May 17th, and today I have a, I don't want to call it a special treat, but maybe something that will give a little lift to your Bible studies and so on. It is one of those mysteries of the Bible where people have argued over it for centuries, and this is the passage where Jesus says, do you love me, Peter, three times? Maybe, well, sort of, at any rate. We'll talk a little more about that in a few moments because I think you'll find, that this is the scripture reading for today, I think you'll find the insight to that very helpful in understanding that passage. But before I get ahead of myself, let's begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charges. So, when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat in the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm today is the Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, and mighty in strength, 
who do his abiding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all which I have told you. Alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands for someone else to dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, today we're right down to the wire, right? Right? We're looking almost over the hill at the crucifixion. And we have Peter... Peter has confessed Jesus. He's promised never to leave Jesus. But then he turns right around and denies Jesus three times. Good Lord. <laughs> and yet, Jesus comes to Peter to forgive, to renew, and to restore him. Three times, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? But the third time, the question is different, very much different from the first two times. It's subtle. It's very subtle, but it's different. And here it is. The difference is hidden, unfortunately, between the English translation of the ancient Bible text, where different words are all translated as love. The first two times, Jesus asked Peter, if he loves him with the love of agape, agape, the self-giving love that Jesus embodies for the world. Okay, so that's the first two times. But Peter doesn't answer the way Jesus asks. He answers him with a different sort of love. Jesus asks, do you love me the way I love you and the world? Peter's response is, I am your friend. Let me repeat that. Jesus asks, do you love me the way I love you and the world? And Peter's response is, I am your friend. There's a deep disconnect between the love Jesus asks for and the love that Peter can offer, or offers, period. The third time, however, what does Jesus do? He changes the question, and he asks, are you my friend? Are you my friend? And Peter responds that he is indeed Jesus' friend. Yet, that's enough. That's all it takes. Jesus meets us where we are. 
and as we are. It's an important thing to remember. Jesus meets us where we are and as we are. And the little that we can offer, what can we offer to Jesus really, right? But the little that we can offer is always made useful for Jesus' purposes. Feed my sheep. Follow me. They're not difficult things he's asking us to do. I mean, he doesn't ask us for all these other things. He asks, feed my sheep. Do simple things. Follow me. We're us those things too. Jesus calls Peter and the disciples who love him and are his friends. And us, along with them, to care for the people he places in our lives and to love and befriend others with the gifts that we can offer in God. That's how simple it is, my brothers and sisters. Let me say this again. Jesus' purpose, feed my sheep, follow me. Jesus calls Peter and the disciples who love him and are his friends and us along with them to care for the people that he places in our lives and to love and befriend others with the gifts that we can offer in God. So the next time you ask yourself, why did God put this person in my life? Well, my brothers and sisters, he wanted you to love him. That's what it was. He put that annoying, awful, whatever person in your life because God needs you to love them. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have heard the wisdom of God in the liturgy of the word. So let us turn to God with these, our petitions. For the church, that it forever remain free from evil and be made perfect in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our day, the peace that only comes from the Lord and radiates from the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all travelers and pilgrims, that they may have a safe journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that we benefit from their ministries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people to realize that human life from contraception to natural death is a God-given right. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, that they may follow Jesus into the kingdom of light and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those prayers we hold in the silence of our own hearts. For these prayers and those entered into our prayer and petition book, that they may be received and answered by our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All powerful God, in faith and love we offer you praise and acknowledge our deeply rooted dependence upon you. Grant, we pray, that you hear our prayers in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us come together and pray that prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a very blessed Friday. Good Friday. Not good Friday, good Friday, but have a good Friday. But tomorrow we're leading into Pentecost. Tomorrow's a Saturday before Pentecost, and then, of course, the descent of the Holy Spirit's upon us, hopefully. But so we'll see you back here tomorrow, Saturday morning, for more Liturgy of the Word. Amen.